Good evening and welcome to the September 24th meeting of the East Hampton School Committee. My name is Marissa Carreri and I'm filling in this evening for our chairwoman, Cindy Kwasinski, who couldn't be with us due to a loss in the family. This meeting is being recorded by East Hampton Media. And Dr. LeClaire, do you have any announcements? Good evening, everyone. If we could begin this evening by standing and doing a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I just have a few announcements. The next regular school committee meetings will be October 22nd, November 12th, and December 10th, 2019. There's no school on Monday, October 14th due to Columbus Day. And there are half days of school on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, October 23rd, 24th, and 25th due to teacher professional development and parent teacher conferences. I'd also just like to note that tomorrow night is the Whitebrook School Open House. All of the other open houses in the district have been held. The high school was first and all of the elementary schools were last week and they've all been a huge success. So thank you. Great, thank you. Any correspondence? Um, I do not believe so. Any gifts? I don't think so either. Good. At this point we would open up the floor to anyone from the public who would like to come speak. Anyone here? Can I have the floor just for a minute? I'd like to um, recognize a group of students that we have in the audience. And um, they are here tonight because last summer they, they had a culminating event in which they were awarded the uh, school's match wits competition. And some of these students have gone off to college. They've advanced a grade at high school. And um, this happened over the summer when we weren't really meeting. And even though we talked about it a little bit in August, I think it's important now that they're back in school to have them all come up and recognize them. So I'd like to ask their advisor, Mrs. Ms. Rose Guerrero, to please come up with Ms. Wilson. And if they could introduce the students and have them come up, I'd like to recognize all of them for their uh, their hard effort and for the long time of preparation that this took and the secret they had to keep I think is also important. Welcome this evening. Thank you. Yes, we are very proud of our team. We would also like to recognize George Sampson who was their coach for many years yeah. um, before I took over. He did a wonderful job. So I'll call the team up and then I can introduce them. If you guys want to just come up to the front and then I'll introduce all of you. We competed with over 50 teams in the area. We were the number seventh seed, um, and we ended up defeating uh, Deerfield Academy, who was the number one seed. Wow. Yeah. It was absolutely incredible. They practice on a weekly basis, um, and they just have we just have a great time along with just like learning. They, I learn a lot of new things, too, with all the trivia, so they're, they're a great group. So we have Drew Ratcliffe, Hello. current sophomore. Aiden Chapuis, who has gone off to UMass. Aisha Okatan, who's a current senior. Quincy Crabb, a current senior. Joseph Huang, current senior. And Hannah Wazinski, a current senior. Alex Hartley was not able to be here tonight, um, nor was Alice Wanamaker, Abby McMahon, or Madison Rinker, or Shane Cudworth. I would like to congratulate um, Ms. Guerra and all the students on behalf of um, what you did to represent our high school. It was just amazing, the hard work that you put in each and every week and just the fun that you really have at it. Um, it's really an inspiration to all of us and um, we can't wait to see what happens this year. So no pressure, but <laughs> <laughs> go can, Eagles. <laughs> can you tell us about the plaque that you have? Oh, certainly, yes. So we were awarded this plaque um, that says 2019 champions, each East Hampton High School. And I think the last time East Hampton High School one was 1978. Wow. Um, so yeah, and it was the um, team that competed um, during last season. That's excellent. Yes. Thank you. I'd like to ask if the school committee can go up and we can get a few pictures sure. with the team. Sure. All right. Sophia, come on up. 
Subcommittee. Uh, we are still working on scheduling a meeting for October. Okay. You're good. And Paulette's your view. Did you want to? Yes. Um, we did have a meeting last week. Yes. My gosh. A week ago. Um, I have not had a chance to submit the minutes to Sue. So um, at our next meeting, we'll have. Um, I think there was two that we needed to make adjustments on and some cancellations. But we did meet and moving forward. Very good. Clean enough that book. <laughs> CES update? Uh, so the next CES meeting is tomorrow. Um, I will unfortunately not be in attendance because of a scheduling conflict, but I will still um, make sure to get all the good updates. Uh, Bill Deal always sends out a great um, report to go through, so I don't feel like I'll miss anything per se. Excellent. Um, education policy update. Well, there is exciting news from Boston because finally there seems to be consensus and um, the 17 member committee of the reps and the Senate, they met and they have agreed to move forward on something called the Student Opportunity Act which takes into consideration all four areas that were identified in the foundation budget review and this is the first time that they were able as I said to come to this consensus and it's a 17 member joint committee and we're very fortunate to have our own state rep Dan Carey on that committee and I in fact just had a nice phone call from him right before I came here and he recommended that anyone who has any interest in seeing any type of amendment once it goes mm -hmm. to the House after it passes the Senate hopefully mm -hmm. which will be like within the next 10 days that there is still time to make amendments so he said he would love to hear from people in East Hampton so please take a look at that and you can find the full bill what is proposed on the website from um, the State House so it's extremely exciting and there's really a good quote that I have from Rep Carey when um, we were discussing it and he said that he does feel that there's a lot of promise at last to see this passed mm -hmm. and um, then hopefully it will be signed by Governor Baker and I said do you really think he's going to sign it and Rep Carey said what else can we spend money better on than education so as a school committee I was really thrilled to hear that so hopefully fingers crossed. Do you know if there's any way to find out how that bill would affect East Hampton specifically? Like, is there a way to kind of get that calculation um, in advance of the well, I think Nellie had done it, hadn't she? And also, um, so he told me he was giving me um, amounts. He called me on his way back from Boston, and I was on the way to the vet taking notes as my husband was driving up Mountain Road. So I have, like, all these crazy <laughs> notes here scribbling. 
Um, he was super excited because he said it um, the circuit breaker funding for the transportation for special ed would be a huge benefit for us here in East Hampton. And um, he was also talking about the proposed amount, which is pre-inflation, $1.5 billion pre-inflation. So it would be over seven years, which would actually result in $2.2 billion increase in the state, which we would see direct positive effects of that. So he did um, outline the special education. He also talked about the MSBA increases, which were already already getting with our new school, but he said that would also be great. Also $10 million um, would be an increase in innovative programs, and he felt that East Hampton really could see the benefit of that as well. Great. So. Thank you. Exciting. Wellness Committee. We haven't met yet, so we have to do that soon. Very good. Yes. And, um, Actually, I, I do get a lot of information from the Mass Department of Transportation because there is another bike and walk event in October, but because we haven't met, it's like the first week of October. I didn't think we could rally the troops so quickly, but I would like to propose that in the future that we do such a thing twice a year because our spring event is so successful. So I'd like to see that move forward. Great. Madam Chair, if I could add. Um, under wellness uh, one um, our public health department for the city and our health agent um, has been doing a great job hosting uh, information around EEE -E -E and what's going on with the pond on her Facebook page we're sharing it to the city I encourage families um, to just take a look at that to be advised. We also, just before this meeting, um, it hit the news that Governor Baker has signed a four-month moratorium on vaping um, and their products. So that'll go through January 25th. We haven't gotten a lot of details about what that'll look like, um, but uh, we just got the press release and Bree will be following up on the effects um, for the city. And, and we think it's around selling refills and the actual vape kits, but we're waiting for those details. Interesting. Related to that, I'd like to bring up that um, even though it's more procedure than policy, that we did discuss that the superintendent is going to be moving forward with talking about different procedures we, um, involved with vaping and the consequences sure. for students, and that it should be more educational and preventative. And mm -hmm. we hope to move forward with that in this mm -hmm. district because it, it is essential. It's, very sad what's happening. Mm. Health and safety. We have not met. Do you want to mention the um, I didn't want to take quality. your thunder, but yes, I could if you okay. want. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> uh, so uh, along the lines with speaking about um, the health, uh, health inspector here in town, um, she did release a study uh, that came out around the air quality as improving in Whitebrook Middle School. Um, and so it goes into some of the different details. I assume this is on her portion of the website as well. People want to get the details for this. Um, I didn't have a chance to read this yet, so I don't know if there's other details you'd like to mention from it. But so I would, I would mention that she's closed the case, if you will, and mm -hmm. because all of the um, items that we were asked to address have been completed fully. She did a, um, an inspection again last week and she's completed all the tests, so um, it's filed away. And that was a press release that was issued. Um, Bree and I were interviewed by WWLP today that just did a story on that. So I think that White Book is in good shape. Excellent, thank mm -hmm. you. Yes, thank you. Good. <coughs> also like to welcome our new student representative, Sophia Fiorza-Licia. And we're so um, happy to have you with us this year. It's really great to get a student perspective yeah. and to have students on the committee. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like a report on what's going on at the high school. Yeah, yes, please. All right, so 
Currently, like September 15th through October 15th, we're celebrating Latinx Heritage Month, and it speaks. Uh, we're having many various workshops and performances occurring throughout the month through our Diversity and Inclusion Center. Um, our student council is attending uh, the Mass Association of Student Council Presidents Dinner this Thursday, and officers are also participating in workshops with other regional student council officers at College of the Holy Cross on October 11th. Um, the Yappy Valley Dog Show is taking place Saturday, October 12th at 11 a.m. is being put together by many various student and faculty in the school. It should be a big success and all the funds are going towards the student council and other connecting activities through that. And from what I've heard, our athletic teams have been doing, had, I'm sorry, they've had a very successful start to all of their seasons and like everyone's got a win, but yeah, <laughs> it's been going good. good. Fun. Thank you Thank so much. You. Um, our superintendent update. Sure. So this evening we have Julianne Levin, and she's going to be giving us an equity update um, for the work that's going on in the district and the equity committees that have been going along. And I think um, I will just say, as Julianne's getting herself situated, there is an article that appeared in today's paper above about the fold. above the fold. Oh. Very happy. It's above the fold. <laughs> yeah about the great work that is going on in East Hampton High School around addressing the issues that were in the Attorney General's memorandum to us. So um, that that makes us feel pretty good. So Julian, welcome. Thank you. Um, so and I should I did not say your role in the district, so I can. Okay, I thank can. you. Yeah. I'm, I'm Julianne Levin. I'm the uh, district director of curriculum, grants manager, and diversity coordinator. So I'm here today as the diversity coordinator. Um, so it was really exciting to get the letter. I hope you've all read from the attorney general. And um, this article really feels like um, necessary recognition of the staff, um, students, um, administrative team at uh, EHS in how much work that they've put in in the last two years. Um, and in addition to the last two years, even the new administrative team jumped in right in July um, this year and was like, what, what do we need to do for, the, for equity? Like, what, what's the plan? So as soon as you know, uh, Mr. Evans, the uh, new high school principal, hit the ground, he was out in the community doing outreach, um, trying to, to find underrepresented um, populations in the community to really listen to and, and think about what um, what was happening for those populations. Um, our assistant principal, Sue Wilson, joined him in all of those. And so the two of them have been and going to, I don't know how many you've done so far. Two full community events, and um, we have a, a house party. Um, we've yep. had house parties. And house parties, this, yep. This week, and we'll continue throughout the year. So this is going to be an ongoing initiative for them to get off site of the um, high school and into the community um, to have these listening sessions, um, whether it's at people's houses or at community um, centers. It's been really been very successful so far. Um, and not that there haven't been challenging conversations in those, but that those challenging conversations are necessary and we're open to them and we want to have them because that's how we get better at what we, what we do. So that's, that's the first thing I want to say. So what you have in front of you is a handout for, from our equity steering committees. And those equity steering committees are part of the um, initiative that we started two years ago. You may remember that when we first started, we um, called it a stakeholder work group. Work group. Yeah. Um, and that was just for 9 through 12. Then last year, we expanded that into our pre-K to 8 um, community as well, because we felt that, well, specifically the recommendation came from the 9 through 12 committee that without vertical alignment, without sequencing from our youngest um, students, that you couldn't just start something in ninth grade and, and have, expect that it would have a big impact. So we started the pre-K to 8 committee, and now we will continue with those committees, even with the letter from um, the uh, Attorney General, this is work we're going to continue doing. Um, we actually got a budget line this year for equity work, for contracted um, equity work, so it's feeling like um, this is all becoming more a part of our systems as opposed to an additional thing we have to do. This is just part of who we are. Um, and so even once we are, um, are done with the MOA, this is still all going to continue. And so that's what's represented in front of you, is not not the MOA, not what we've been told to do, um, but what we want to take on ourselves as a community committed to equity. Mm -hmm. 
So the first two pages are from your pre-K to 8 committee. And you may notice that most of the recommendations are about the building project. Um, and that's where the committee has really felt like its push has been, is that in two, two to two and a half years, <laughs> um, we'll all be in one big building. And we have the opportunity opportunity to design that experience as an experience of equity from the start. Mm -hmm. And so that's what this committee is really focused on, is how do we create that, how do we, you know, from, from scratch, how do we build a culture of equity? So that's the recommendations that are here. Um, on the, I do want to, there is one I want to point out a recommendation that I think is um, really important. You'll see all of them. But um, one thing that we've been talking about is the use of student voice in um, what our recommendations are and how we're planning and how we're reflecting on that. And we started to think about the way that student surveys are used for um, in classrooms with teachers. And so one of the big things we wanted to talk about was how are students giving feedback to teachers about the, their experience in their classroom? And what can that process be something that we put into um, a system so that it becomes a really reflective process for the teachers and the students? So that's one of the big things we're going to be working on this year is thinking about those student surveys, how we get that information from students, how we get it in um, you know, a way that teachers can hear it and learn from it. So that was one of the ones I'm really excited about. Um, 9 through 12. This is actually, so you have one page here. We have um, a four-page document that has a lot of words on it, if you'd rather. Shan <laughs> Shannon's like, no, I didn't like that document. <laughs> this is a better document. Yeah, I know. So um, at our last meeting, um, which we just held uh, this month, um, we decided that we needed to go from the really big, wordy four-page document to actually making some priorities for ourselves this year that we might be able to accomplish. Um, so that's what you'll see on, um, on that. A couple things I want to point out is our ongoing PD on unconscious bias um, that we've talked about. Like Even though we had a couple trainings um, here and there, we get new staff in every year. We, you know, we, just, we need to have that be part of what we do all the time, um, an ongoing conversation. So that feels really important, and it's something that the Attorney General said um, that, yes, we recognize you've done this, but we'd really like to see you continue to do it. Um, and that felt like a really good recommendation. Um, advisory was another big one we talked about. We really want to make advisory time um, useful for everyone involved. Right now, it's, it's 10 minutes. I don't know if, Sophia, you have feelings about that 10 minutes at the beginning of the day. <laughs> I, mean, Just, I tend to see a lot of people doing their homework. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, that's not really the intention of advisory. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, we're we're thinking about what we need to do um, to kind of bring everyone together and re envision what that time could be like, what curriculum we might use for that, how to um, best prepare um, teachers to facilitate that time, and then eventually the aspirational goal is how do we empower student leaders to actually lead that time um, as well. So. Big dreams about advisory. Um, I'm going to actually stop talking now because I I just love the work that I do, and I could talk about it for hours, which is not a good idea for tonight. <laughs> so, if you have questions for me, that would be wonderful. Yes, Lori. How often is there an advisory now? It's every day. Every it's, day. it's but it's ten, ten minutes, minutes at the very beginning of the day, um, and so we haven't we haven't totally figured out how to effectively use it as a way to like connect students to each other, connect students to adults. Like that hasn't been really the focus of it yet. So we gotta we gotta step back and re envision the whole thing. I think at our last meeting did Mr. Evans mention uh a periodic longer advisory yes, period? Yes, Is yes. That already that's called place? extended advisory. That's already in place. Um, but it's I think at most once a month. Once a month. Yeah, once a month. Yeah. For particular reasons. Sure. Yeah, and always around, yeah, something that's actually happening that needs it. <coughs> Other questions about anything? About anything? Are you worried about anything? <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to mention the um, recruitment? Yes, that? thank you. Oh, yes. You were supposed to do that, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> um, so the you'll see in both of these recommendations, I think it's the top recommendation on both. Yep, it is. Um, is recruitment. Um, we really there was so much energy around equity work two years ago, and we were it was easy to recruit people. It's 
gotten a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and especially in our pre-K to eight, uh, <coughs> we really need representation from all four of the buildings that are four, yep, mm -hmm. um, of the buildings that are involved in that committee. And last year we didn't quite get that. So our goals for this year is to get equal representation um, on the pre-K to eight um, committee. And our goal for both committees is always that we want students to outnumber the adults. We haven't been able, we, we managed that a little bit on the pre-K to eight team a few times last year. We haven't gotten there with the EHS, the, the nine through 12 team. And so that's a big piece of what we'll be doing this September and October, we'll be recruiting. All leading up to October 26th um, will be our, our big kickoff day where we'll get both teams together and really do some visioning and thinking about what um, the sequence from pre-K to 12 looks like for equity in this district. So yes, join. Everyone join. <laughs> what kind of commitment is it, Julie? It's a once a month um, afternoon, like late afternoon, evening meeting. We were doing them last year at, from 5 to 7 p.m. Um, on one Wednesday of the month. Wednesday or Thursday. Wednesday or Thursday, okay. that's right. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the one sat October 26th, this is a Saturday, and that's um, a Saturday training so that everyone is available and can be there. Yeah. And we're hoping to have another one in the spring with both teams yes we're hoping to culminate kind of yeah we up. didn't we didn't get to do that last year which we all thought was a missed opportunity so this year we're hoping to get the pre-k um to eight and nine through twelve teams back together in the spring to do like a reflection of our year and um more more planning and recommendations great anything else so i would just like to say that i think the work coming out of these committees has yeah. been amazing yeah and I think that the, um, my impression, particularly from the high school group, the students are extremely engaged, yeah. the students that are on the committee. Mm -hmm. um, they also seem to be the students that are involved in a million it's other true. things as it's well. True. So <laughs> yeah. um, they're a hard group to capture. Yeah. But I know we have a lot of um, dedicated staff and administration. It's, it's sometimes challenging to find a community support Definitely. so that's again an area so students and yep. community leaders parents are, are really what we're seeking yeah. for the committee so I don't want anyone to feel as though they if they don't have a child at that level or oh no you know, and that, they, have that they shouldn't participate they should everyone contact should participate. you maybe if they're yes. <laughs> if they're interested yeah. um, but I think that the committees do great work they have yeah. great dialogue mm -hmm. um, and I think that they're having great a uh, great impact mm -hmm. on the work that it, it's focusing our attention on um, so it's one of the aspects of all the equity work we're doing but I yeah. think it's a big aspect so. it is it definitely is it's sort of the the umbrella group that's right. kind of looking at what everyone's doing and I would say the other um, I mean, one of the reasons we need students, recruit students for the 9 through 12 is because we had students graduate, which is awesome. But um, <laughs> <laughs> now we're like, but come back. <laughs> right. um, and then even on the pre-K to 8 committee, we had a really awesome group of eighth graders now that we are going to try to transition onto the 9 through 12 team. Um, but then we'll need more students at the pre-K to 8 level. And we're hoping to include fourth graders this year. We had, we had fifth graders last year on that team, but didn't go all the way down into the elementary schools. And we're feeling this year like we could take on some fourth graders. And that would be a really Aww. great part of <laughs> the work that we're doing. So I'm, I'm the, the other that. The other piece that if you could just talk about yeah. for a minute, the one of the amazing presenters we had oh, this Dr. year, Pryor. and I think um, Shannon was there. Amazing. Um, yeah. And, and, and Laurie was, too. was there. Yeah. Um, That's amazing. She was an amazing presenter from Smith College. Mm -hmm. um, she's an author, she's a professor. She does a lot of work around racism, and I'm um, just yeah. wondering if you can talk about the Sure, year. yeah, we brought, um, we brought Dr. Pryor in um, because last year we started to have this really challenging and great conversation about um, the use of the N-word in academic settings. So as you know, the N-word is in many um, pieces of literature, of historical texts, primary texts, like it's out there and it absolutely, these are documents that we need to be teaching in schools. So what does a teacher do or what does a student do when they come across that word in a text? Um, and we grappled with it. It was, a, it was we, we struggled and um, 
we reached out to some surrounding communities and Amherst Regional High School said, yep, we, we had that same struggle last year. Um, and we reached out to Dr. Pryor to, to sort of help us understand what we were struggling with. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she came and did a presentation at the beginning of the year. I don't know if Shannon or Laura, you want to talk more about it, but that was, that was what she addressed was how do you responsibly use these very necessary texts that have this word that we're all struggling with. Yeah. What I would like to compliment our teachers on, mm -hmm. I was equally impressed, if not more impressed, by how engaged and how thoughtful our teachers were in their questions to her and their responses and how they worked together that day. Yes. That to me was even more meaningful than what she had to say. I agree. Christine, and she how pointed that out too. Yes. When, when she was walking out, she said I, I, the, the level of richness yeah. in the conversation that was coming from the staff members, she was like, I was so impressed. I don't see that where I, in, in the places that I go. I was like, oh. Yeah. So, yes, That's that was very nice to hear. <laughs> now yeah. we're going to continue. Yeah, and she's, um, this, so yeah. she has a model, um, it's called um, Teaching Circles. And so she uses that model to have, um, and I think I put it in here, yeah, comp complex and courageous conversations starting from the workshop presented by Dr. Elizabeth Pryor. So continuing to have those same sorts of conversations that had started in the workshop um, that really deserve you know, a supportive group of people sitting in a circle to grapple with and work through um, because it's not, it's not comfortable always um, when we have these conversations and it's, um, we, never, we don't quite know where they might end up. Mm -hmm. And so to um, build that trust with a community of learners and mm -hmm. be able to have those tough conversations, that's, I mean, we've already come so far at the high school with doing that. And this just, this particular workshop felt like this is the turning point. Mm -hmm. Here we are. So, so Julian, I'm curious. Yeah. Um, I know it, um, in our equity group, mm -hmm. we had talked about possibly a, a policy or a procedure, or is that still going to move forward? I mean, are, is there oh, around the N word? Yes. Oh, uh, so I um, so last year with with um, Dr. Pryor's feedback and and other professional feedback, I um, put together guidelines, not a okay. policy or a procedure, but rather guidelines um, of what to do, you know, here are some options. You know, you, you can use substitute language, you can just say N-word, you can, you know, there, there are a number of different ways. You can use um, spoken word or, um, you know, books on tape, things like that, so that mm -hmm. students and teachers don't actually have to say the word themselves. Mm -hmm. So there, were, there are a lot of options in my guidelines. Okay. Um, and I disseminated that to, I guess the whole district, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I was going to say middle school and high school, but I think I just sent it to everyone. Can you share? I would it? love to share it with you. Does well, everyone want to see it? it? Yes, yes. I'd love Okay. To yeah. <laughs> I hope you like Only it. Only because just I, I loved yeah. how, you know, the way um, Dr. Pryor, you know, had said right at the beginning, you, you need to establish the rules. Yeah. At, at yep. the very mm -hmm. beginning and mm -hmm. stick to them. Yeah. Don't change it halfway through, don't make exceptions. And it was just, I loved that message that she gave. And I'm yeah. just curious, yeah. like, yeah. where we're going with it now that we've talked about it. Yeah. Um, and I, I would say that the guidelines that I wrote are still subject to some more collaboration and fine tuning by the staff. Um, and so I'm hoping that that's part of what's happening this year. Um, not I'm hoping. That's part of what's happening this year. Yes. Um, so, yep. Thank you for asking about those. Thank you. Yeah. I will definitely send them out. So I would just like to thank Julianne for all your hard work. This is a like? this is a really challenging task to take on on top of being the curriculum director for the district. Mm. <laughs> but I think that Julianne deserves a lot of credit, as does the administration at the high school, Sue and Kevin last year and Bill Evans this year, who has jumped right in and right in. and he's yeah. running the equity committee. He's like, I'm in, <laughs> running so, agendas. Yeah, okay. so um, <laughs> he is really devoted to this work, and I think the staff has been amazing, and the and the students I yes. think have been great. So, and, and even at the pre-K through eight level, there's a lot of adults in the school district that really want to dive into the work. So, yeah, that great. reminded me that we also. Again, this is in here, um, but NCCJ partnership. We were able to send a couple students to a, um, a student leadership um, summer program, a week-long summer program for student leadership in social justice and equity, and um, they had so much fun. <laughs> and now we'll be able to send six more stu or six students next summer. Um, so we're really hoping to get six students who are interested in going to this and bring back that learning for all of us. So it's great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Nice. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much.
Sounds good. So thank you. Okay, yes, good. thank so you. We're on to matters for action. Let's start with warrant and payroll. Okay. <clears throat> Bear with me. So, uh, in that case, if I may, uh, I move to approve the school payroll dated September 26, 2019, in the amount of $523,107.37. I second that. Wait, 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 wait. No, those those words are wrong. Five hundred. I don't say twenty-three thousand one hundred and forty-seven dollars. Yeah, very good. Good catch. Wow. Good for you for catching that. And thirty-seven cents. Excellent. And we had a second on that. So I correct. Second the correction. Very good. We have a motion and <laughs> a second. All those in favor? Aye. Um, I'd like to move to approve the accounts payable authorization for payment dated September twenty-six, two thousand nineteen, in the amount of fifty-eight thousand seven hundred forty-eight dollars and ninety-seven cents. I'll second. Okay, motion to the second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. And then just minutes. Minutes. All right, next. All right, in that case, um, I would like to move that we approve uh, the minutes dated September 10th, 2019 for the executive session that we held. Do we have a second? Oh, I'll second it. Hey, we have Jonathan's not doing it. Nobody else is uh, doing it. <laughs> We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, then I'd like to move to approve the regular session minutes from the same date, September 10th, 2019. I'll second. Excellent. All those in favor? Um, uh, I would just want to amend the record. I wasn't at the executive session mm. and, and voted, so I'd like to just abstain from that vote. Sure. Because I wasn't there. Any other minutes? Or is that um. I think that's it, because then next we just have this, which is from last time. Yeah, I think it just has some amendments. Yeah. Go with that. So then, yeah, it's just the field trips. Field trips. Field trips. Oh, that's that. So nope. We did that. We did that too. Okay. Sorry, guys. Oh, it's just in the regular package. There's my problem. So we have. Uh, an out-of-state field trip request from um, our teacher Quinn at the high school. I'm going to forgo the last name, um, but I know he does some of the tech and engineering work. Mm -hmm. Running. Um, it's, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're going to be going to the New England Air Museum and Bombardier Service Center in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, via bus, uh, to observe aviation industry professionals. Nice. Um, so I'm going to guess they're actually like making things there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so we'll complement a unit on aviation and transportation. So I'll move that we approve this out-of-state field trip request. I will uh, second that. The trip will be not till April 16th, 2020. Very good. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Oops. One more. Okay. Indeed. One more out-of-state field trip request. So uh, this is Ms. Bonsignor and five other teachers. Um, this is to High Meadows in Granby, Connecticut. Oh, this is senior class, senior senior class, class outing senior. already, yeah. <laughs> um, so that trip will be on June 1st, 2020. Um, I move we approve the out-of-state field trip request. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. I'll second. All those in favor. <laughs>